Hey all, welcome back to Whiskey Book. Motorcycle Mike and I got a treat for you today because it's not one whiskey, it's two. One book though. Stay tuned to find out how Sierra 6 by Mark Greeny fits in with whiskey. Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiskey Book. Today, we're doing something different, but the same. So last episode, we did Mark Greeney's The Gray Man, which was the very first book in the series, The Gray Man series, which is my all-time favorite. Uh, there's a few getting up there. Keep giving shout outs to Jack Carr and the Terminal List, but Mark Greeney, The Gray Man series just strikes me right, right there. I love it. It's good stuff. It's some of the, the smoothest, best pacing I've ever read and heard or listened to a lot of the audiobooks. This, we're doing something different. I'm not going to do every book in the Gray Man series. I want to move on to some other things. Uh, I am going to do the full Terminal List series as the, the shows start coming out. This was also adapted for, I said last time, on a movie on one of the streaming services. I say adapted because to me it's loosely adapted. Now, Mark Greeny signed off on it, but I don't recognize much of the adaptation that I do in the books. The books are, sometimes adaptations are fun to watch and you can say, yeah, that's cool. It's, it's, but I expected it to be a little bit more of the book and it was not. The books are so good. I, I, I hate for him to jump off that wagon. But anyway, what we're doing today is kind of special because this book is unique in a way how it's, written and i won't say unique it's not the only book that's ever done this by any stretch but what it does is it, it follows two timelines 12 years apart simultaneously well chapter by chapter you'll get one chapter present day one chapter 12 years ago and what's really cool about this is and i think mark Greeny gets it he's just an author you can tell when you read he gets it uh courtland gentry our protagonist our hero in these books is just kind of down to the earth down to earth and he's a lot less he ends up where he can do everything but you don't get the feeling in the book that he thinks he's the biggest badass or or, or anything he's just awesome at what he does and he has an internal confidence but but i, I read some other books and you we're navy seals we can do everything 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 okay i get it i love i like those stories but this it's a down to earth smooth read but what i like about this is it goes old then new then old then new then old then new and you get where i was going to before is i don't like when you get a full series out and all of a sudden there's a prequel novel out that tells you the story the background of the protagonist just like this happened before you just read this entire series and followed along to the present day kind of it's kind of a pet peeve of mine but I understand why there needed to be a prequel on Cortland Gentry, how he became uh, the gray man and who he was. That's why I love, 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 love this book because it gives you some of the prequel, but then it bounces into a modern day mission that he he's working on. And in that mission, it ties in purposely ties into what happened 12 years ago there's the the antagonists there's some of them that are the same some that's not i'm not going to ruin anything about the book this is a spoiler few spo spoiler free review um oh man do i love this book mark greeny sierra six so what are we doing with this today so before i dive into the book too much I gotta, I'm doing something a little different this week. Usually I do one book and how it relates to a whiskey. This one, because this book bounces old to new, old to new, I'm gonna do a face-off or whatever. There's so many, I don't even know what words I can use anymore because all the whiskey tube uses all the face-offs or showdowns or whatever. It's a face-off between old and new. What I have on my right is an Eagle Rare Kentucky straight bourbon. Sometimes some places is really hard to get. I haven't seen one in my area in a long time, but you can tell this one's down a little bit, um, which may change the flavor just a little bit, but it hasn't been down that long. So I, I think we're really good there. But Eagle Rare, 
is a 10 year, oh, this light killing me, is a 10 year Kentucky bourbon. It's older, it's about where I'm at, right around 38 to 40 dollars, depending on the store I go to. So we're just gonna say it's right around 40 bucks. But for 10 year old bourbon, it's Wow, it's no wonder you can't find it because it's it's really really good. It's a Buffalo Trace product that, of course, all if you know anything about whiskey, Buffalo Trace products are hard to find. They they do the allocation thing. This one though, uh, if you can find it, it's it's fairly cheap, fairly uh, accessible, and just really good. And a ten year bourbon for under fifty bucks. Holy cow, really good. This one is Smoke Wagon Small Batch. Now. Uh, if you know, again, back to people who know a lot about the bourbons and the whiskeys, Smoke Wagon became famous for first their vodka, which I really like, and their uncut, unfiltered series. But for this showdown, face-off, meet at high noon thingamajigger, I wanted to kind of compare like to like. This is about 42 to 45. It's more with shipping, but we're just comparing straight up. We have light bottle dark bottle we have old we have new and get a get a look at that bottle i mean holy cow smoke wagon it's got the, the cross pistol coin up there just kind of goes back to the old west look and and whatnot but that's not the point of this video is it the point is we're gonna go old well, actually we're gonna start with new and go to old because in the book sierra six and i will get to the title in a minute why it's called Sierra 6, it starts in the modern day. So we are going to start with the Smoke Wagon Small Batch, which is out of the Nevada H&C Distillery. And why this is special, why this is new, is what... It's sort of new. What Nevada H&C does is they take whiskey juice from a different source. They put it with their younger whiskey and they have a unique aging process and it ages quicker as a younger bourbon as far as i can tell all right let's just get into it real quick because i want to get to the book these whiskeys are great this book is great this episode's going to be great so what do we have here this is smoke wagon small batch and it is it's up right at a hundred proof i think it's got some a little bit of punch to it, and I like it, and let's go for it. Okay, I'm a little surprised here because of both of these bourbons, the I expected the Eagle Rare to have the kind of apple cider, peachy, fruity nose. I'm actually getting that on the smoke wagon. I'm getting a little, like I said, apple cider. Definitely get some vanilla. Uh caramel some spice kind of lighter than I expected um, the uncut unfiltered doesn't have the greatest nose either it's really good flavors it's, it's a little light on the nose if I remember right and this is a little the small batches the flavors are toned down a little bit from the uncut and filtered uncut unfiltered Obviously means they pull it out of the barrel. They don't cut it with any water. They don't filter it. It's just how it comes out of the barrel. All right, I get something on the side. I get like a cinnamon toast over here on the side. Wow, I get a lot of... The nose reminds me a lot of some Irish whiskeys. There, there's some peppercorn spices. Spices. <laughs> All right, let's... Let's see what this tastes like. Okay, that's pretty good. I get some vanilla right off the bat. The van vanilla auto immediately in the middle of my tobacco, my tongue turns into some spice and some barrel, uh, some oak. Definitely oak. And the oak is still sitting on the back. So if you look at the think of your mouth you have the bottom of your tongue I feel the oak there but on the top of my mouth I'm getting sweet I'm getting like a uh, almost like it reminds me of like a, uh, a caramel roll with that's kind of spicy that's got a lot of cinnamon on it okay 
You know what? I had this the other day and the bottle hadn't been opened up yet. And now it's been open for about a week. And it's it's there was a there was a spike on it that I didn't like, and the spikes kind of mellowed out into a really good I'm not getting the apple cider on the on the palate, but it's mellowed out into the more vanilla caramel with peppercorn with red berry. Yeah, getting the oak in it too. Really, really good. All right. Got to let that settle because it's sitting in, it, it's got, I wouldn't say it's the most viscous or best mouthfeel I've had. It does have, it, it's not bad, but it, it just doesn't coat. Like uh, there's some others that just absolutely wash my mouth and just sit in there like oil, yummy oil. But the finish is really good. Now, I don't know if you can tell, and maybe I'm just not noticing the mouthfeel because it's got good legs on the glass. That, that. It looks pretty viscous on the glass. Okay, now we are going to go Eagle Rare. <laughs> Eagle Rare is an interesting, because it's a cheaper bourbon, but it's 10-year, but it's hard to find. What I've been told is in the past, it used to be what's called the gas station whiskey. If you, in, a, in a state, you can't do that in my state, but if you're in a state where a gas station can get a liquor license sell whiskey, this used to be all over. Kind of just a cheaper grab. And the funny thing is, when you when you smell it, you get I get sort of plum, I get fruit, I don't get the apple cider, but but I get some really good fruit flavors. But then I also I also smell like it's not young whiskey, but I smell cheaper whiskey at the same time. But then you go back, and it's really good hard to it's a that's a hard one to explain there's just a lot of fruits definitely definitely some red berry like raspberry cherry i'm getting cherry but i'm not getting the cherry cola and a lot of times when i get cherry it's an ab absolute either cherry freezy or cherry cola this this is like almost cherry cough syrup but a little better it's a little richer and then I get some caramel vanilla on the bottom. All right, let's drink up. Hmm, very interesting. And, well, I should know this stuff before I get here. I can't remember what the proof is on this. I thought it was around, yep, 90 proof. It is 90 proof. This, the, the smoke wagon's a little proofier. And I think I can tell right off the bat, the Eagle Rare has a really good punch of fruit and flavors. It's almost like Skittles, like watered down Skittles right on the, the mouth. But the finish is poof, gone. I, I've seen so many videos on Eagle Rare, people just loving on this stuff. And, and yeah, for the money, it's pretty good. And, and right there on the top of the tongue, I'm getting that red Skittle just candy goodness with some plum and fruit sort of mixed in there. That, that one, okay, that finished right there, stuck around just a little bit longer. Let me go back to the smoke wagon. We're having our show down here. Hmm. The smoke wagon comes at you with just some, a, a much harder punching bourbon the flavors just reach out it's like talons on, on, on an eagle reach it <laughs> eagle so this is the eagle rare the smoke wagon is the one that has the talons that reach out and just grab into you like like taste me i'm yummy All right, that was dumb but yeah it's really really good um eagle rare by itself if i don't have any other bourbon with it it, it tastes pretty good but side by side it just kind of pales in comparison to the smoke wagon and, and i don't believe the class it's outclassed here like i said this is the small batch not the uncut unfiltered the small batch is is about i think it was 45 dollars. so a lot of people say i see on videos that they can get the eagle rare for like 30 32 okay in my area this is 40 this is 45 that ain't that that, ain't, that isn't much of a difference it, but the 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 taste profile completely different 
So I'm going to let those settle a little bit. We're going to come back to the whiskey in a minute. But right now, let's get into this book because this is whiskey book. And I've got two really good whiskeys and one outstanding book to get to. So this book, Mark Greeny, Sierra 6. Why is it Sierra 6? Well, if you've gotten into the Gray Man series at all, Cortland Gentry's call sign or name is Sierra 6. Where that comes from is the, it's a CIA Alpha Special Activities team, and their, their name is Gulf Sierra, and they have six Sierras. And this is, I'm going to tell you right now, where I absolutely can't stand the, the adaptation that was done to film. So in that movie, there's an assassin assassin who gets killed i'm not going to say how just in case you haven't seen it, it, it realism not there definitely doesn't act like the gray man or, or a ghost of society in the that that flick but the the worst part of it is one of the assassins is called a sierra like the sierra name is the assassin group that Cortland gentry is a part of and that is absolutely not the truth the sierra gulf sierra is a cia alpha or what an alpha team is in cia is uh so C cia needs their own tactical team and this has to be they, they've got to go to the worst of the worst areas best of the best kind of stuff they recruit from uh, dev grew or seal team six they recruit from heavily from um uh, gosh, well, I don't even know what they're called anymore. Delta, but they're not called that anymore. They've had so many names. Uh, so it, it's more akin in skill level probably to like FBI's HRT that takes from these groups as well. But the CIA really, really picks out Delta and SEAL Team 6. And so in this book, you have this group of Sierras. There's Sierra 1 through 6. Sierra 1 is uh, Hightower. And Hightower is the leader. He's through the entire book series uh, to points. I won't spoil it because he may or may not be killed at some point. But Hightower is this alpha, alpha. When I talked earlier about Cortland Gentry's kind of laid back and, and kind of smooth, uh, Hightower is the opposite. He's that Navy SEAL, I can do everything, alpha, alpha male, whatever, whatever. But this group... You see it throughout the other books how Cortland Gentry as the gray man bounces in and out of this team and he's a part of this team at one time and another part the team is out to get him and that's what's so interesting about this it's a it's a it's like a bad relationship they 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 work with each other and then they don't and then they hate each other and then it, but anyway this book the part that's the prequel the ones that go back 12 years talk about Cortland Gentry's initiation into Gulf Sierra, which later becomes named, named the Goon Squad. And you see that in other books. And this book explains where the Goon Squad came from. Kind of anticlimactic, but it fits um, how it goes in this book. You could pick this book up and maybe you wouldn't appreciate it as much if you haven't read the series, but this isn't a bad starting point either. The modern part of this doesn't give away too much of what happened in the books prior to this in the rest of the series so I wouldn't hesitate to pick up Sierra 6 and then say go back and let's let's find out how we got here because this is so dang good this is Mark Greeny at his best he has perfected his craft the again the pacing in this book is absolutely wonderful the action sequences are spot on I, it's hard for me in books, I, as I get older, a little maybe ADHD, I, I, things just take me out of books and, and then I have to pull myself back in. Not this one. This one, I'm stuck in it when I'm in it and I absolutely love it. There are very few points that just, I, I sit back and go, hey, what, what was that? The the equipment spot on, the, the training, the tactics, it's, it's all spot on. I cannot say enough about this book, Sierra 6. I cannot say enough about the Gray Man series itself. This series, I could do a whiskey. I could do two whiskeys for every book. It this this is an awesome, awesome series. If you like thrillers that are spy, that are military, that that deal with espionage, that deal with assassins, 
nothing beats the gray man the gray man is the standard all right so i can't recommend this book enough i can't re recommend the series enough i can't recommend uh just getting into this enough audiobook is the 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 narrator and i am so sorry i don't have his name right in front of me on the audiobooks in this series is if you get it from um audible and i'm not i am not sponsored by anybody you you get it from audible that that narration is just outstanding it just holds you holds me better than any modern movie i've seen in a long long time let's just put it that way all right back to the whiskeys real quick we're going to end this here we have the old the now this is only 10 year old whiskey but it could be 12 year and so in the book they go back 12 years so let's see what 12 years ago tasted like deep red berry that time deep red berry very coating on the front of the mouth. It doesn't follow through to the back of the mouth. I think Eagle Rare needs some more training. Let's see what happens 12 years later after Portland Gentry has, let's just say part of this book is how somebody fits on a new team. And what's really cool about the book, so many things, but but the, the prequel part, is you're taking a loner, a, a lone wolf uh, who has done everything himself and you're putting him on a tactical team and he may be the best at the best at what he does, but he's not the best at working with the team and that the, the struggles from both sides, from him fitting on the team, from the team not wanting to accept the new Sierra 6, it, it, it's a really interesting part of this book. So let's see if... The new, man, did I do this backwards? I think I did this backwards. I think I was talking about like the Eagle Rare, like this is the new guy. No, Eagle Rare is the 12 year, 12 year ago, Mark Greeny, Cortland Gentry, Mark Greeny's Cortland Gentry, who is just finding himself on Gulf Sierra. Smoke Wagon is modern day after training, after being. I won't say accepted on the team because I'm not giving that away because there's some twists there. But this is modern gray man. Modern gray man has certainly learned some new tactics, has some more spice to his life. And if it if he was between if it was if it was between it is between these two whiskeys. Between these two, I will take the smoke wagon all day, every day. But that's not to say the Eagle Rare is bad or sucks or Eagle Rare is really good. Again, I find this with a lot of Buffalo Trace products, except I don't, I'm not really into regular Buffalo Trace, but I really do like the other stuff. They're really good on their own. They don't always stand up in a crowd. And I, I just, I'm wondering if that's why a lot of people like them is they're so subtle in some things that it's just really nice to have one, but you put it in a crowd and the, and the, the punch of everything else just, just overwhelms it. I hear that a lot with Blanton's, even though I love Blanton's, but anyway, get it. Wow. If there's one thing about this channel, it's, I go down rabbit holes all the time. And anyway, so this was sort of a face-off, but I just wanted to drink two whiskeys and talk about the dichotomy and the back and forth of Mark Greene's Sierra 6. Do not hesitate to pick this book up. Go grab this book, download it on Audible, download it on a free, a free library app, and listen to it. Have fun with it. This is such a good, good, good way to get into uh spy thrillers it's just great thanks for watching and i appreciate it and i'll see you next time here on whiskey book